Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now this is the Intel Core i3-9100F. It has 4 cores, 4 threads and it's been out about a month, yet there aren't really any reviews on it and considering it cost around £90 or $95, I thought it might sound like a tempting option to those building a PC on, say, a tighter budget. It might be silly to buy anything right now and not wait to see what the Ryzen 3000 series chips are like and how they affect pricing of other CPUs, but hey, any sub £100 or dollar processor always catches my attention, so these are my first impressions. I plan to test this again and compare it to a couple of Ryzen chips including the 3600 next week to see how it stacks up in the grand scheme of things, as well as other Intel offerings, but for now I decided to let it hog the spotlight as it may not get another chance to do so. So the 9100F is clocked at 3.6 GHz and features Turbo Boost technology, a first for the i3 series which allows it to hit up to 4.2 GHz. Being an F-series chip, it has no integrated graphics, hence the cheaper price, but you're not missing much. It supports up to 64 gigs of 2400 MHz DDR4 RAM, but I'm being a little more modest with 16 gigs. I've also paired it with my trusty 1070, something I feel would actually be a sensible pairing. That or an RX 580. First of all, I was eager to see whereabouts it fit in regarding Cinebench R15 and how it compared to other processors that have been tested. Turns out it falls just short of the Ryzen 5 1400, but sits pretty close to an 8-threaded 3770 non-KI7. Single core wise you're looking at similar results to an i5 4670K but that could be overclocked and end up scoring better. So why don't we take a look at how this thing handles games. Will the four threads hold it back at all and can you expect to see at least 60fps most of the time with the GTX 1070 in the system beside it? Well first of all we started off easy and gave this processor a chance to run CSGO with 1080p and the auto settings which set everything to high. Here the average was 225 frames per second with a 1% low of 138 and a 0.1% low of 80 meaning that there weren't really any stutters to speak of. You can see that neither the CPU or GPU are particularly stressed when playing CSGO and that's to be expected considering this really isn't a demanding game but it's one that I always get asked to include in the benchmark tests simply because it's still very popular. The i3-9100F will have no problems in running Counter-Strike Global Offensive. Forgive me if I accidentally say i5 at any point in this video. I've got an i5 in my personal system and I keep accidentally saying it um, and having to cut and record the parts again because I don't know, it just accidentally comes out as i5 instead of i3 but the i3-9100F does a good job to start with here. Now in Battlefield 5, with the high settings at 1080p once again, the settings that we've pretty much remained with throughout the entirety of today's benchmarks, you will see an average of close to 100 frames per second. We hit 97 on average with a 1% low of 55 and a 0.1% low of 45. There will be some instances where the processor hits 100% usage, but the same can be said for the graphics card, which will touch on 98 or 99%. Battlefield 5 is more of a CPU intensive game, hence the high percentages here, but the i3-9100F still seems to handle it quite well, especially when paired with this GPU, and I think you'll have a pretty decent time. First impression so far? Well, things are going quite well. If you're Team Intel, you want an Intel chip, you don't have much of a budget, and the i3-9100F keeps coming up in your recommendations or it's caught your eye, then it really wouldn't be a bad choice, but like I say, I think it would be a silly time to buy one right now, because who knows, this may also see a price drop in the very near future, so that may be another reason to hold out for now. It's a similar story in Far Cry New Dawn, the newest entry in the series, 1080p high, 93 frames per second on average, with 1% lows of 73 and 0.1% lows of 57. This was the in-game benchmark test, which doesn't really differ all that much to gameplay you'll have a decent time regardless when using the i3 again it will max out at 100% every so often which can make you quite nervous if you're constantly observing your statistics but if you're just gaming on a daily basis and you don't pay too much attention to CPU usage which most of you probably wouldn't and you don't have MSI after burner on or anything like that then you're not really going to notice any performance hiccups and as seen 
in the figures on screen, this 100% usage in the four threads doesn't really affect things all too badly. In Just Cause 4 we were able to average just over 100 FPS at 1080p with the high preset, 101 was the exact average. This is more of a GPU intensive game so most of the strain was on the GTX 1070 here. Again this will vary um, depending on where you are in the map, I've said it before, but Just Cause 4 features such a massive open world map that the performance in one area could be over 100 FPS and in another area it could dip below say. 50, but overall you're going to have a very decent time with this game and the i3 9100F, or that's what I found from playing it for about an hour or so. As expected, Metro Exodus was the most demanding of today's games, averaging just 56 FPS. I say just, but it was a pretty decent result. The 1% and 0.1% lows were 30 and 28 respectively, but it wasn't necessarily the CPU that was having issues here. The graphics card was actually maxing out at 99%, 100% usage here and there. Um, this is a GPU intensive game. The benchmark result also differs quite a bit from actual in-game performance, um, so you may see a few extra frames when you're actually playing the game across a few different levels. Overall though, it's going to be an okay experience should you choose to opt with this i3. In PUBG, I really wasn't doing much on screen here and this average will depend totally on what's happening. As the action heats up, you may see dips below 60. 86 and 34 were the percentile figures here. That 34 does indicate some stutter, and every so often the CPU was touching 100%, and I think that's what caused this. Um, PUBG would probably benefit from the extra threads here of, say, the closely performing i7-3770 in that Cinebench test. This game just likes a few extra cores, that's all, but in the long run, I'd happily play PUBG on this i3 all day long. It certainly did quite well. I'm trying to look at this thing on its own here and not make too many comparisons to other chips because if you live in a country where this differs in price completely to say Horizon, then in those instances it may be the only option on the table for some of you. So Rust is quite a frequently requested game and I spent all day downloading it today. Um, 1080p, the highest preset, I believe it's called Fantastic, something like that. We averaged 73 frames per second. I wasn't really sure what to do, I've never played this before. I was just running around for a bit. I accidentally hit that pause menu and sure enough I had to cut that bit out because I wasn't expecting, well, you know. But uh, yeah, overall Rust seems to run quite well on the i3. So that's all I can really say. I'm not sure how much of a difference it would make as we venture further into the game, but so far so good. Now Shadow of the Tomb Raider was particularly demanding on the processor, with it hitting 100% usage in a lot of instances. It's games like this that will make the i3 struggle, um, but you'll still have a pretty decent experience, averaging around 75 frames per second with a similar pairing. As you can see, the 1% and 0.1% lows are 48 and 27 respectively, that lower figure there being the result of the four threads of the i3. But it's doing okay so far. Now last but not least, we have The Witcher 3. 1080p high once again in both the graphics and post-processing options, so 84 FPS on average. You'll notice that the 0.1% figure was very low, and that's because as we headed towards Novigrad here, we saw some horrendous stutters, with the CPU hitting 100% usage. Now despite the high GPU usage as well, when I have the 1070 paired with my i5, I certainly don't see stutters on this scale, so you may want to turn things down a little bit. It also seems to be a pretty decent video editing chip as well, I've been using it with Premiere Pro to edit this very video, and everything seems pretty fast and fluent, so it's nice to know that it's pretty capable when it comes to that too. At this point in the video, I'd like to mention a few comparisons here. If you can, then yes, the Ryzen 5 1600 for example, or 2600 for just a tiny bit more money, would be the better bets here because you are getting the extra cores as well as the hyper threading. I think even the Ryzen 5 1400 would be a better option because although it has four cores, it does have eight threads, which really helps out in some games. So just always be careful to see what else is on the market when you're thinking of buying a CPU. I know I said I didn't really want to draw too many comparisons as that's something I'll save for another video, but I think it's important to really carefully consider all of the options available to you on the table. Although this is priced quite well, in my opinion, 
at around 90 pounds or dollars. The Ryzen 5 1400 can be found for a little bit more, um, sometimes around the same price here in the UK or a bit less. And I have seen a couple of deals recently on a Ryzen 5 1600 whereby that's been going for £100 or £110 too. And of course, that can be overclocked a little bit. If I had to sum up the i3 in one word, it would be surprising. It did better than I thought in a lot of titles today, but it's still quite hard to recommend when you consider everything out there. If I had to look at it on its own, as I've been trying to do, um, I'd say it's an okay chip. It sort of is hard to ignore the rise and elephant in the room. But I think this would still perform average-wise quite closely to a couple of Ryzen chips. It's just the 1% and 0.1% lows that suffer as a result of the four threads. But we'll have to analyze this a little bit more when I check this out again, comparing it to other Ryzen chips, including the long-awaited 3600. So hopefully I'll see you in the next video where we do just that. If you enjoyed this one, leave a like on it, leave a dislike if you didn't. Let me know what you think of this i3 or whether or not you own one. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and hopefully I'll see you all in the next one.